that one wanted that. That is a nice fish. What's going on y'all? Welcome to Zodiac Fishing. My name is Josh, and in this series, we are gonna talk about the unicorn of topwater lures, the Whopper Plopper. Now in this video, we are gonna take a deep dive into the design of the bait, its function, its hardware, and I'm gonna give you all sorts of tips about how to get the most out of your Whopper Plopper. So let's get into it. The Whopper Plopper is one of my all-time favorite lures, and I've been able to catch some gnarly fish with this bait. And as much as I want to take all the credit, I truly believe that a lot of it has to do with its genius design. Now at first glance, the Whopper Plopper might look like a stick bait or a spook, but it's actually a two-piece lure. It has a connected cylindrical shape, plastic head and body, which is one piece, and a disconnected tail, aka the propeller or the prop. Now, because the body and the propeller are disconnected, it allows the tail to freely spin on a straight wire while the body remains neutral. Now, unlike the hard plastic body, the propeller is made of a soft, pliable material which bends, and when it's bent, it'll actually flex back into position. And I think this is one of the things that sets this bait apart because the propeller can really handle a beating, whether it's stumps, rocks, or even big toothy predators. As we keep moving on, let's check out these hooks. All six Whopper Plopper sizes will come with two treble hooks, but the sizes of the hooks are determined by the size of the Whopper Plopper. Now, as far as quality goes, I think these hooks are rather decent, and I found them to be quite sharp and ready to go straight out of the package. I've had no problem landing big fish like this 50-inch monster on the original hardware. Now, with that said, I replace all of my hooks, and I replace them for two reasons. One, I have broken several treble hooks in half by making poor casts up against rocks. And second, I have lost a few fish because of hook bends, like you see here. Now, when I'm replacing my hooks, I like to use VMC round bend hooks like these. And I also like to go up one size on the body hook, which I think helps keep that nose buried a little bit lower as you're pulling it through the water while also adding additional hook coverage on that front end. Now, if you don't want to initially change out the hooks, that is fine. Like I've said, I've landed a lot of fish without any changes made, but I think you will eventually want to change them out because the front hooks will rub up against the side of the body, causing a rash and scratching off the paint. And of course, along with other things like debris, weeds, hooking into other fish, your hooks will eventually get dull anyways. So why not invest a little bit into some hooks that might hold up for you a little bit longer than the original hooks? Okay, let's talk about split rings. All of the Whopper Plopper sizes have split rings that connect the treble hooks to the body and the propeller inline wire. But not all sizes of the Whopper Plopper will come with a split ring on those beefy line ties. Only some do. I don't really have a strong opinion when it comes to the split rings on the Whopper Plopper. I know some anglers immediately replace the split rings, but I haven't experienced any problems like I have with the hooks and I don't change these out, but if it gives you peace of mind, go for it. For the last design discussion point, we are gonna to touch on color. Now, color is a complicated topic and it deserves a lot more time and attention, so in this video, I am gonna give you my simplified opinion, but we will dive deeper into color and conditions in another video, so stay tuned for that. When it comes to the Whopper Plopper, River to Sea, who makes the Whopper Plopper, they offer a wide range of color options and patterns. If you want to match the hatch, you can do that. If you want minnows, shad, perch, they have it. If you want bold colors, something to create a silhouette, they have those too. Now with that said, remember the Whopper Plopper is a top water lure. And my advice is do not overthink color when it comes to the Whopper Plopper. Remember, fish are only going to see about half of the bait in the water anyways, and it's going to be moving at a high speed. So the most important color is going to be what's going on on the underside or the belly of the lure, not what is going on on top because the fish can't see that. Now, if someone forced me to list the most important colors of the Whopper Plopper, I would rank them like this. In tier one, I would have white and black, and I would be perfectly content never throwing any other colors for the rest of my life. I know I can catch fish on white and black, and that includes a wide range of species like musky, largemouth, smallmouth, and pike. In tier two, below white and black, I would list bone, chartreuse, and clear. And these would be a plan B option for me if white and black fail. Now in tier three, below 
one and two, I would list chrome and bold colors like red. And honestly, I don't fish with these colors. Not that they don't catch fish, I just don't need them to catch fish. Okay, now that we have some of the basics out of the way, let's get into the good stuff and talk about the function and the use of the bait. First, we're gonna talk about castability. The Whopper Plopper is one of those baits that is just fun to cast, and with the right setup, you can throw this thing a mile. And what really helps make it great is that it's counterweighted, which means the tail will face away from you, so you won't get that weird knuckleball wobble action, which really helps for precision casting, even on those long throws. Now, the Whopper Plopper has a reputation of a chuck it type bait, but I'm telling you, don't put limits on this bait because you can pitch this thing or toss it around cover, docks, rocks, and other targets for pinpoint accuracy as well. It's not just a bomb style bait. At the beginning of this video, I called the Whopper Plopper the unicorn of top water lures. And one of the reasons that makes this bait so special is that it is a propeller style bait that floats. Now, while the bait does float, it will submerge itself under the water on initial impact. And there's kind of two schools of thought around what an angler should do as soon as the whopper plopper makes initial contact with the water. First, for some anglers, they think you should let the bait hit the water and then wait a few seconds for it to resurface. Once the bait resurfaces, you can then begin retrieving. And the advantage here is that you'll cut down on collecting weeds and grass and tangled up because it's generally in that first few feet or yards that your whopper plopper will actually pick up weeds and grass. But if you wait, you can reel over top of them instead of through them. Now, the second school of thought is to not wait for the lure to resurface on its own, but instead you just reel immediately or maybe even start reeling before it hits the water. And this is kind of the same mindset that you would have with a buzz bait. And the goal is to get the bait to the top of the surface as fast as possible. Now, the second option does put your lure in position to get caught up more. But here's the deal. I personally would risk collecting weeds over letting my whopper plopper slowly rise to the surface because I do not want a fish to get a good look at this bit. I want the fish to hear the splash landing, see it, and hear it immediately on the move. So for me, option two allows for the chance of an instant strike. But option one, I don't think it gives you the best chances for a reaction strike. Instead, I think a fish might get a good look at it and maybe even move on from it. Now, speaking of grass and weeds, I have two tips for you. The first tip is after every retrieve, make sure you always check to see if weeds or grass are caught in between the body and the propeller. You'll probably know this as you're reeling the whopper plopper into you. But if the propeller cannot spin freely, then what will happen is the body will begin spinning instead of the propeller. And as a result, you'll end up dragging the bait across the water or barrel rolling it. And that will just do damage to your line. So, so before every cast and after every retrieve, make sure that you do not have gunk and grass and weeds and all that stuff caught in between the body and the propeller. The second tip is about the design of the Whopper Plopper itself. And for those who do not know, not that long ago, River to Sea updated the Whopper Plopper. And some of the older editions of the Plopper were designed so that the tail and the body would actually close or pancake together. And the older design made it extremely easy to catch grass and it was almost even more difficult to remove that grass. Now, recently River to Sea has updated and designed a feature to help resolve this issue so some ploppers now have a weed buffer and the head of the propeller now fits into a cupped out body and in my experience the buffer is a great design but it doesn't guarantee you won't catch grass but i think it does help you get that grass out a little bit easier than you could before now my golden nugget is this when you are purchasing a whopper plopper if you are purchasing one in person and not online make sure you buy one with a weed buffer because in some of the stores around me at least they still sell the older models so look for that buffer when you're picking out your next whopper plopper okay so far we have talked about how well the whopper plopper casts and how well it floats but let's now talk about how it sounds for me the whopper plopper is first and foremost an auditory bait so i'm going to repeat myself the whopper plopper is first and foremost an auditory bait 
it is a fish magnet and it attracts fish primarily because of its sound. Now, the reason I am making such a fuss and emphasis about the noise is because I know there is a little bit of a stigma in the bass fishing community that thinks big noisy baits like the whopper plopper will actually scare away fish. In fact, I recently heard an angler recommend to others to cast past a fish and retrieve over top instead of throwing directly into that area of the fish. Right. Now, of course, casting past a fish and retrieving over sure top is an excellent there. way no. to catch a fish. But if the reason you're not throwing into that area is it's because you're scared up. that the sound of the whopper plopper is going to scare away the fish, then I just really question how much fishing you've actually done with the whopper plopper because. The fact is, I've seen way too many fish hit this bait immediately after landing, just feet away from them. I mean, you can literally throw these baits on their head and they'll eat it. So, my point is, if you are a little hesitant of the noise that these whopper ploppers create, just know and be confident that the fish aren't scared of the noise, it's just you. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you about the Whopper Plopper is just let the Whopper Plopper do its job and be a megaphone in the water. And for me, how you can do that is by simply listening to it because the Whopper Plopper will tell you how to fish it. It will tell you the speed to retrieve it. And all you got to do is listen. Now, when I'm fishing the Whopper Plopper, what I'm listening for is the loudest sound that it can make. And in my experience, burning it, or creeping it doesn't typically produce the loudest sound it's generally somewhere in that middle range now I wish I could tell you the exact speed to produce the loudest sound for your whopper plopper but you're gonna have to play around with the retrieve speed to find your lures optimal sound but when you find it try to keep it at that level for as long as possible now with that said the whopper plopper is an extremely diverse bait because of its combination of propeller and ability to float and of course, there are conditions and seasons, regions, water, species where a steady, straight retrieve might not be the best option on that day. You might want to creep it or burn it or pop it or give it a little twitch a few times on a straight retrieve to get a fish to commit. But in my opinion, all of those options are secondary and inferior to the straight retrieve. And if you were asking for my opinion, I would exhaust the straight retrieve in trying to get my lure at the loudest for the longest period of time over any other whopper plopper technique. That's just my two cents. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because I'll be rolling out a whole lot more videos on the whopper plopper. As always, thanks for watching.